Oh, that's a neat number. That's my subscribe account. Yeah, that's wild. Never even thought that this would be something I'd be able to do and to have this many people like my stuff. I'm flattered, honestly. To celebrate this big master, I did another request post asking for your ideas and people did not disappoint. I went in and tried to do as many of them as I could, so there's going to be a few different designs this video. For my own sanity, I've kept the dex entries to be a bit more subdued here, but expect Pokemon, Fake Mon, Beast Paradoxes, Toy Paradoxes, Shiny Evolutions, Mr. Beast Paradoxes, Emoji Mons, and more in this 10k, 10K celebration. celebration. Let's just jump right in and hey, don't forget to like, sub, and share this video around because there'll be more request videos in the future. Our first design was requested by Flying Taco, which gave me the amazing idea for an Ultra Beast Toy Paradox. Go here for a video about Toy Paradox Pokemon, by the way. And not only that, a Nihiligo Sock Puppet idea, and that was just mwah. I can't be the only one that finds Muppets and by extension their horrid cousins the Sock Puppet the funniest thing. I got a weird obsession with him, so Kia was perfect. I wanted to have the sort of same form of Nihiligo in a way, but have it as this eerie floating sock with a portal to another dimension, just kind of hanging beneath where your hand would go. Maybe it's the sock dimension where all the odd pairs of socks go. Oh, just Ultra Space, that's also cool. I thought it'd be funny that the sort of mouth opening for it could be the lid of the jellyfish-like head. And that would be its physical attack with it opening it up and just taking a big old chomp. The special attack could be it holding its portal up and firing it or something like a cannon. I tried to be a bit cute here and make it so that the buttons were where the patterns were on the blobble he had. And the threads holding the buttons would be in the shape of the pattern instead. Meet Cotton Parasite, the paradox Pokemon, a poison and psychic type. This mysterious Pokemon seems to resemble another strange phenomenon. A Pokemon called Nihiligo. It eerily floats above people and lands on their hands. By doing this, it takes control of the victim, allowing them to speak through the persons and even control their movements. Some trainers create elaborate contest displays, pretending to perform ventriloquism with the cotton parasite. This solution only works if the crowd remains unaware of the Pokemon, firmly attached to their hand. Cotton Parasite has the ability Whimsicore, which is the same as the other Paradox types, it just works on misty terrain. Man, can you imagine Lusamine just instead of being the mother beast, she's just being controlled by this thing instead? Next, Roxanne Winslow asks for me to make a Pokemon from emojis. So I rolled three emojis and we got Tortoise, Scroll, and the Japanese symbol for no vacancy or full. I decided I want to do a bit of a ruinous quartet thing here and have a Scroll Tortoise. Sort of a scroll that came alive, potentially due to malice, or maybe just the sheer amount of big brain knowledge written on the scroll itself. I thought it'd be fun that the body of this Pokemon was the scroll, and the head, neck, arms and legs would unfurl like how a rolled up piece of paper would. Little did I know how difficult this would be to actually make it look like this, and not just some strange swirl pattern on the skin. The symbol for full was hard for me to show here, so it's more like a concept that this is just a full of knowledge tortoise, a rare and powerful jade inlaid with gems Japanese scroll I guess. Of course they've been around for a while so they have a scrolly beard and some scribble writing to give it a look as if it had some old tortoise wrinkles. I don't know, it looks pretty chill, I'd learn with him. Tomanchi, the knowledge Pokemon, a psychic type. Tomanchi are said to be born when a scroll becomes so packed full of knowledge that it gains sentience. Tormanshi spend their long lives protecting the knowledge on this scroll, only revealing its contents to people they deem worthy. Despite their slow movements, they possess a sharp mind capable of foreseeing three steps ahead of any opponent, making Tormanshi the best tacticians among Pokemon. Tormanshi have the abilities analytic and weak armor. My time has come. Navy Blue Gacha asks for more unique individual forms which was a lot harder than I thought to create. Blood Moon Ursaluna being the only one sort of makes the concept quite open. I thought it'd be fun to try and make one for Legend ZA when it comes out. Something Frenchy, no, not that kind. And I decided upon Feeble, a Pokemon that is often overlooked for its low stats, but honestly, banger designs. I thought it'd be fun to make a form based off the fictional thief Arsene Lupin. 
which I'm sure many Persona fans know as Persona 5's main Persona name. Feeble in this form takes on a bipedal, dashing, gentlemanly look. I wanted to give it some extra parts to it, so it wasn't just some strange bipedal Feeble walking about fictional France. So this version has a very similar thing to Blood Moon Ursa Luna, having an asymmetrical eye that takes the form of it looking like a monocle. Later I added a pupil to it, so it looks a bit more natural, however. Feeble in this form also gets a snazzy bow tie made from leaves and a cane used for... canely things. Is this why they're called the canine? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! And with a flowing cape of darkness, I can just see this full of personality thief jumping between rooftops, stealing the hearts and valuables of Lumio City. <sighs> Feeble, Phantom Thief form, a dark type. This form of Feeble spent its life traveling with a world famous thief, learning everything they knew. It soon became smarter, more deft, and more powerful than any Feeble seen before, ultimately becoming its own unique form. Feeble can meld into darkness, becoming one with shadows, to evade capture while pilfering anything it can lay its hands on. Its wooden cane is primarily used for creating distractions with the knocking sound it produces. Its unique eye allows it to see through any wall. This form of Feeble gets a new ability in Heist giving it a sharp boost to its stats when they steal or otherwise interact with a foe's items. Nicholas Sanabria3219 gave me a few ideas, but you know I can't say no to a good old Marsh Tom. I wanted to do something wild and silly here, really go above and beyond to create something really weird. I wanted to turn Marsh Tom into a proper fish. No mud here at all, nope. This Marsh Tom takes on the form of a Silicanth, maybe even being a cousin to that of Relicanth. It'd keep that no-brain, head empty look that Marshtop has that we all love it for, but it loses the feet. Sorry to a certain few of you for that, but now it gets speedy water fins. I love Steelercamp, and partially it's because of the absolute raw energy that Steelamon has in Digimon World 1. It's just got that drip. Can't you just see this thing in game doing that normal water type fish Pokemon flying in mid-air wiggle? I certainly can, and I don't know if that makes me happy or not, to be honest. Splashing 2 for Water and Dragon type. This Pokemon could possibly have been an ancient relative of Marsh Tom, and may have been closely related to Relicanth. Despite their dull and mindless appearance, Splashing Tooth has quite a violent streak, using its large jaws and sharply honed teeth to rend even the toughest rock. Areas where Splashing Tooth live have rocks bearing large jaw marks, serving as a warning to any would be trespassers. Some person does stuff, said, I don't know, draw Blazion from Yokai Watch as a Pokemon. Okay, so all cards out on the table, there's not much here. I don't really know this character, nor do I exactly like it. I've got a few personal faves from Yokai Watch, but hey, I'm gonna try my darndest. The main thing here was just making the head a bit bigger, giving it a bit more of a Pokemon like fire, as well as get rid of those cloves, and give its hands and feet a few less digits to my own liking. I mean, if you take the clothes off of normal Blazion, I'd say this would probably look like a Pokemon anyway. But we aren't going to do that, you nasty people. Keep, keep your clothes on, Blazion. Blazion, the burning main Pokemon of fire and fighting type. Blazion are the embodiment of a fiery spirit burning for battle. When they're in the moment, their fires rage and can cause their opponents to faint from the pure heat that emanates from it. The fire only increases as it battles. You can tell a Blazian is bored and not enjoying a battle if their fire starts to falter or wane. A Blazian that's lost interest may just straight up leave a battle. Blazian's abilities are Iron Fist and Moxie. Baryonyx112 asks for Beast Paradox Clod Sire, and I am happy to oblige. Head here for more information on Beast Paradox Pokemon. I should say that to make it simpler for myself, I need a star in Pokemon in this video, non canon. Alright, so my idea was in the Ultra Convergence, Clodsire's lack of real movement ability and the Pokemon of the Convergence being generally immune to their poison. They're adapted to become capable of floating. Now these are based on the fact that the type of Salamanders used for Clodsire were actually sent into space. Now the test done include a lot of, well, you know, just look it up if you really want to know more, but I turned Clodsire into a cute little floating spaceship. The spike spines that adorn their body now work like fins, as well as window lookalikes on the body too. And of course, I thought it'd be cute if Weaver became little mini ships to fly around Clodsire. These guys would make wonderful little ships in a side-scrolling shoot-em-up game. 
Clodsire, Beast Paradox form, a flying type. Clodsire and Whipper adapted to survive in the Ultra Convergence by taking to the skies. They hold gases within their bodies, allowing them to float effortlessly and zip around swiftly by expelling these gases. Small pockets on the side of their bodies can hold a couple of Whooper each. When threatened, they close these Whooper pockets and launch themselves away. A Clodsire at maximum speed is difficult to catch. Clodsire in this form have the ability Speed Boost and Aftermath. Matthew Diet 3618 gave me a list of different ones, but here I chose Future Paradox Metagross. It's just something I could not pass up. Turning this already mecha into, well, more mecha, let's go for it. I thought it'd be fun, much like our Roaring Moon takes a lot from its mega form, our future Metagross here would do a similar thing, but sort of combine every form together. This one's also a bit of a challenge, just due to the sheer detail and edges I had to keep together and in proportion for the design to work. I wanted it to keep it much more of the Mega Metagross body shape, keeping those front four limbs sticking out in front, no longer needing to walk on them, but getting rid of the back ones to just remove clutter. They'd be able to float independently of the body, and so I added into it a future Beldum Eye as well, which kind of makes this a Paradox Beldum. It's our little control unit here. I thought it'd be good for colors to use shiny Metagross color schemes due to it already needing that sort of steely color. And of course, we got that wonderful blue Paradox energy. Maybe you could even jump into this Metagross and fly away. Iron Mecha, a psychic and electric type. Iron Mecha resembles the Pokemon Metagross in its mega form, and is believed to have been built by a scientist to serve as the ultimate vehicle for all terrains. Each of Iron Mecha's arms has its own brain, which is as intelligent as a human adult. These arms can separate and perform reconnaissance individually, however they cannot remain apart for too long, as the main unit of Iron Mecha provides power for the four arm units. Autumn Blueberry asks for a shiny Evo for Dragonair. Go to this video if you want to learn more about shiny evolutions. It's just such a great idea. I mean, look at that wondrous pinky purple it's got. And now we can keep it long and also a little Digimon here. Getting a lot of inspiration from Holy Dramon. I was about to say I can't believe that Gardamon can Digivolve into this, but then I forgot she can just become a literal angel. Me just totally forgetting the Digimon can jump to anything. This dragon here becomes a bit of a lung dragon, keeping that snake-like body but giving it some arms and legs that are quite far away from each other. This thing probably would not walk, maybe climb around, but it'd just mostly float. It'd be able to do similar things to that of Dragonair where the wing ears could extend outward when it really needs some speed. I thought it'd be cute if we keep those orbs and turn it into those same sort of orbs you see on dragons. You see them holding in some depictions. Now all I can imagine that instead of using attacks, it just yeets a glass ball at the enemy's head instead. Dragalair, the revered Pokemon of Dragon type. Evolves from shiny Dragonair while holding a dragon scale and leveling up in a high place. Dragalair live high above the clouds and are often mistaken for Rayquaza. They are serene Pokemon that collect the energy of the weather around them and store different weather conditions within their pearls. In response to the wishes of people in Pokemon below, Dragalair changed the weather. They have saved multiple planes from disaster by clearing up stormy weather. Dragalair's abilities are levitate and a new ability called Weather Pearl, where when switching out this Pokemon will clear weather effects and then reset that weather when sent back out. Chaos Artist asks for a star in evolutions, so let's jump in with a new kind of gross and non-canon evolution for a star. -er. So what's so gross about this one? Bug type. It's a bug type evolution. Of course, it's Australia, we can only have a poison or bug type here. So this one is based on the good old funnel web, a bit of a terrestrial spider that doesn't make webs up in the trees. This Eevee is going to be a bit cuter than those ones though, going for a bit more of a Sylveon Eevee generation look. I wanted to give it the eight legs, but without actually giving it eight legs, because that would just be horrifying. So you'll see those bulbous ears and two little nubbins on the tail add up to make those extra legs. I imagine its ear parts would be usable as hands as well as a bit like Sylveon's ribbons. I wanted to give it a bit more of an Australian influence, so added in a bit of a pattern to call back to our Aboriginal dot paintings as well. I guess if I did come back to the design, I'd probably give it a more of a greeny yellow bug type color, but I thought black and white works well for a gross creepy crawly Eevee. 
Arachneon, the skittering Pokemon, a bug type. Evolves from Eevee after taking 50 physical bug type attacks. Arachneon is off putting to quite a few trainers, but despite its looks, it is incredibly sweet and affectionate. They are fluffy and enjoy snuggling up to the trainers to keep them warm. Arachneon has the ability to fire sticky strands like other bug Pokemon, and will use this to create comfy little resting places for themselves, especially when it rains. Arachneon have the abilities Fluffy and Nunnerve. Becky's Art asked for a regional variant of the Pidgey line, and you know what? They do deserve it. I'm just going to do Pidgey here, but if you want to see more of them, comment below. My idea here was for a Paldean Pidgey, because I saw these wonderful painted pigeons that are used for racing, and that just filled my mind with ideas. My main thought here was making a more streamlined Pidgey. These aren't as wild looking and take on a decidedly more colourful look. I wanted it to look like the top of the Pidgey's head was something of a racing helmet lookalike. He's a little cocky pigeon and will take up most of the road if allowed to. Colours were hard here, but I decided upon this interesting saturated pink peachy colour and purple, which I felt gave it the best painted colour without going too gaudy. And while it does give poison kind of vibes, I think just making a pure flying type here makes sense. They bred that normal type right out of them. Paldean Pidgey, the race pigeon Pokemon, a flying type. In Paldea, people bred Pidgeys to be as fast as possible in the sky, resulting in a brilliant and colourful appearance that makes them easier to spot. Each Pidgey has variations in colours and markings that aid in aerial identification. In the wild, these Pidgeys can come off as quite rude and haughty, often pushing other Pokemon off their flying routes without remorse. However, they have respect for each other, and wild Pidgeys can be seen racing about together. Pidgey's abilities in this form are Gale Wings and Wind Rider. Hunter Cheshire asked for switching the future Swords of Justice and past Beasts around. Although I went a bit rogue here, I chose the Beast but in a twist I decided instead to make a future Paradox version of this image of them all combined together. I thought it was a pretty good compromise for it. I thought that this thing would be rather easy to combine together. It's so weird that the two fusions didn't appear at all in game as something I wonder if it was maybe kind of a weird beta design that they thought giving us a sneak peek at would be cool before defusing them. I ain't mad about getting more paradoxes, but damn these go so hard. I thought the special paradox energy for this fusion would occur for the Suicune parts, being the head thingy and the sashes as well. In this form they're like dangerous lightsaber whips or something goofy like that. You gotta admit this thing is intimidating as hell though. This would have cleared everyone in that Entei movie. I am Beasts. This Pokemon's typing can be switched to be any combo between fire, water or electric type depending on what drives you give it. This Pokemon once theorized to just be a myth was discovered and seems to be a robotic fusion between the three legendary beasts Entei, Raikou and Suicune. It has a special ability to change its typing depending on specific drives that are inserted into it. It has a loyal personality to its trainer, willing to go to any lengths to make sure they are protected, even sacrificing its own existence. Next, Draconis Rex 4217 asks for a Beast Paradox form for a Staran Tyrantrum, which would be, I believe, the first Beast Paradox of an Astaran form. They specifically asked for it to be based on the Devil Joe, and I'm happy to oblige some angry pickle entertainment. Oh, that, oh, that sounds so damn wrong. I wanted to keep it almost like this slow descent into madness, with Tyrantrum normal form looking kind of chill. The star in Tyrantrum looks like he's a bit of a grub monster, but the Beast Paradox form will be a raging ball of anger. I didn't want to go overboard with the teeth like how Devil Joe is, so instead I decided to make it so that the white fur of Tyrantrum here has Harden and become almost two fly stand-ins. I wanted this to definitely show mainly in the beard looking like this horrible toothy chin of Pickle Joe. Devil Joe has that sort of wild draconic energy form, so instead of it having that, the orange parts of Beast Paradox Tyrant would glow with energy constantly because it's just that angry. I hope I have sufficiently Devil Joe Tyrantrum for you here. Beast Paradox of Star and Tyrantrum, the Rampage Pokemon, a dragon and fire type. Found deep within the Ultra Convergence, this form of Tyrantrum appears to only originate from the Astaran form of Tyrantrum. It has adapted incredibly resistant skin and regenerative properties that cause its skin to crack, 
revealing layers underneath that glow intensely from internal heat. Tyrantrum expends significant energy to maintain this power, requiring constant eating. When food is scarce, they will resort to devouring their own tails, though few have witnessed this behavior. This form of Tyrantrum have the abilities Anger Point and Regenerator. She's a Fof. 4534, I don't know if I said that right. Astro Beast Paradox Ogre Fawn. Now this one is definitely 100% non-canon, but this one was kind of hard to do and the idea is a little bit wild, but bear with me here. My idea here was some kind of Ultra Convergence Corrupted Mask, which causes Ogre Pawn to change in form to her Beast Paradox form, and is now based on the Yokai Roku Rokubi, the long-necked woman Yokai. While the mask ominously hangs above Ogapon's head area, Ogapon's main head, now attached by a vine, moves about, causing all manner of goofs and spooks. I wanted to give Ogapon a bit more of a scary and ogre like appearance on her face with this one, and you'll see I uh, do change it and the mask a couple of times. One thing that stumped me here was the sort of idea of what is part of Ogapon's head and what is her body or arms. I opted to have it so the hood is attached to the main head area which kind of brings along the arms too, meaning it kind of now looks like a cute little ghost. This kind of also brings in a duller hand sort of thing as well. Typing was a bit tricky here, but beast paradoxes aren't constrained to typing conventions with the paradoxes. So I think making it ghost dark type here is fun and just ditching the grass type for now. Ogapon Convergence Mask Fall, a ghost and dark type. Somehow, an Ogapon found its way into the Ultra Convergence. The mask that accompanied Ogapon became corrupted by Ultra Radiation, warping the Pokemon and taking control with a mind of its own. Ogapon itself is not harmed in this form, and sometimes revels in the chaos caused by its mask body hybrid. However, it also engages in bickering with the mask, attempting to knock it away from the body to revert back. Ogapon in this form has the ability Infiltrator. Our final idea of the video is a toy paradox that was asked by Go Play Outside 3599 and they asked for a toy paradox stack attacker. And I assure you this will not be the final Lego adjacent toy paradox, but I saw this and I thought it was just too perfect not to do. Funnily enough, there's not a lot to talk about in terms of the design here as it is literally just stack attacker but Lego. Except for a blatant illegal Lego techniques. Yeah, that's right, I'm going straight to Lego jail for this one. It's like normal jail, except much easier to break free from. The hardest thing here was keeping it all in perspective with all of those Lego lines. And that's why the legs are just sort of broken away from the body and able to move independently. Very illegal of me to build it like this. I wanted the little eyes that pop out of Stack Attacker to be a very important Lego bit. The classic stud. But in that transparent neon orange chainsaw color. Please, LEGO fans, don't come for me if I've somehow got a part that LEGO doesn't actually have. No! Plastic Fortress of Steel and Normal Type Found in a mysterious catalog, this Pokemon resembles Stack Attacker. Each block of Plastic Fortress is its own Pokemon with a mind of its own, but they're quite weak individually. When they combine, however, they become a force to be reckoned with. If faced with a force too strong for them, they may violently fall apart and then rush to reassemble themselves. However, they never quite reform in the same combination as before. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this sort of longer video. There were many designs here that slapped and I thank you for requesting them. As always, I constantly appreciate your support and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give me all the good likes, subs and comments and what your favourite design of the video was and share this video around. Here's to another 10 billion subs so I can do Mr. Beast challenges and eventually run for president. Professor Farfo 2034. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video.
turn myself into a pickle, Morty. Boom! Big reveal. I'm a pickle.